This video will show you how to install an SSL certificate on the Secure Data Appliance for the first time. Also, how to replace an existing certificate on the appliance. First, we're going to log in. And this video assumes that you already have created a district in your environment, as shown here, per the documentation. If not, please go ahead and do that first. You will encounter this message instructing you to go to the SSL Credential Management page, which is this tab listed as SSL. So we click on the tab and we see that there is no existing SSL credential. The SSL credential pretty much is a combination of the private key, the certificate, and the certificate signing request. So we're going to go and create a new credential and it's going to be based on our district name and the prefix which is needed by the system to access the encryption and decryption URL, also known as the policy URL. So we're going to click Save, and as is shown here, we see that it now shows our full uh, name for the SSL credential, and it shows the key, which means the private key, and the certificate all with red marks which indicates that they're not valid. So the first thing we need to do is to create the server, the certificate signing request and by that we need to complete the SSL defaults which I already pre-populated prior to this video and then we're going to go and select export CSR. We have the option to either copy and paste the content of the certificate starting with begin certificate all the way down to end certificate request. We can also click export to save the file locally if preferred. In this case we're just going to copy and paste because we already have a method to generate the certificate. So we're going to go to our tool for generating certificates and this will vary uh, depending on the person uh, working with the secure data appliance because it could be an internal certificate authority by an organization or it could be a third party entity that is going to be issuing the certificate. In this case we're using an internal CA for testing purposes and we're going to paste the CSR as shown and then we're going to sign it and this will produce for us what is known as the main certificate, the leaf certificate and also an intermediate certificate. The next step will be to actually go ahead and install this. As you can see since we already created the certificate signing request, it automatically generated a private key in the system to match our uh, certificate. So the next thing we want to do is import the certificate and as you see here we have the option for text or file. So if you receive the certificates from a third party in a file, you can actually upload the file directly through this system. In this case we're going to use the copy and paste option since that's what we're using at the moment. So the first thing you want to do is to copy your leaf certificate and you want to paste it and then you want to add the intermediate certificate as well So we're going to copy and paste the certificate.
and paste it as well. Now we're going to click Save. And as you see here, it shows that everything is valid. However, the reason why it shows that it's valid is because we already have the root certificate here for this certificate. Now normally if this wasn't here, you will say, still see this message here. Sorry, not a message, but the icon showing as not valid. So, in that case, you need to install the root CA for that particular certificate. And we're going to copy and paste again, save it. And as you see, it shows that it's valid. Now the next step is to actually deploy the changes that we just made. And by that, you can go to the deployment needed and click Deploy. This process can take uh, a few minutes depending on how many remote hosts the customer has and provided that the connections to those remote hosts are healthy and it's able to connect to them. So we can see the deployment was successful, which means that now the SSO certificate is installed on the appliance. If your certificate includes the name of the host itself, like in this case, my host name is this, and my certificate did include the name, I can also apply the certificate to the management console so that way it shows up as up here as valid. In this case, I will still get an error because it's a self-signed certificate, but with a third-party uh, certificate authority, you will get uh, either a green lock up here or no warning message. To do that, you will click the Apply to MC link and click OK, and that will give you instructions on what to do. In which case, you have to go to the SSH admin console in order to be able to make the changes. So we're going to go and to that appliance using SSH we're going to log in as admin And this will take us to the admin console. So the instructions tell us to go to Manage Appliance and then Apply Management Console Certificate. So we select OK or hit Enter. And this process will take care of uh, installing the certificate accordingly to the web server and restart the necessary services in the back end. This is completed without any errors which means that it was successful. So we can now quit that screen since we don't need it. Now our certificate is installed and as you see when I clicked on the screen it gave me an error the reason for that is because the service got restarted so now I need to go back again and log in 
and now the management console is running with my new certificate uh, let me just verify that's the case because it could be a different one let me see so yes as you can see it was issued today and it expires in a year from now so the certificate is the current one that we installed can see here there's our intermediate certificate now let's say for example that you need to uh, replace a certificate it's pretty much the same procedure so but in this case if the certificate was expired you will see this date here shown in yellow as a warning prior to uh, the certificate expiring so what you want to do if you don't need to replace the private key you simply click export CSR copy the CSR provide it to your signing authority or internal CA and you will get a new certificate and just apply that new certificate now some organizations due to security and policy requirements need to get a new private key installed for each SSL certificate that gets renewed. In that case, what you want to do is, first of all, you want to make a backup of the current credential. To do that, you click on Export Credential, and you enter a password, which you're going to use to import the credential if you need to later on. Normally, what I do is use the same appliance password so that way there's no confusion on what the password is unless you have a password manager or save it to a file this action once you click import is going to prompt you to save the file call credential backup followed by the name of the actual um, server name uh, what I normally do is I also append the date to it and that's my choice so that way uh, I know exactly from what date I saved it once you have the credential created I'm sorry you have the credential saved you can go back and delete the credential notice that even though you deleted the credential it's still in the system unless you do a deploy as shown here your credential is still going to be in the system so you can always click discard to revert it but in this case we're just going to go ahead and create a new credential I'm going to select the same exact name and as you see we pretty much end up at the same place where we started originally so if you follow the same procedure you can install a new certificate with a new private key to match your security and organization's policies and then once done and you get all these fields in green again you can click on deploy and then the changes will be saved we're just gonna do that now just for the sake of uh, doing the demonstration so we're gonna export the CSR and remember this CSR is gonna be different than the previous one because it has a new private key we're gonna go to our SSL tool here going to remove the previous CSR and we're going to ask to sign the new one okay so now we're going to copy our new certificate
and we're going to import the certificate. We're going to add our intermediate certificate. And save the settings. As you can see, everything is in green. So now the next step will be to deploy the changes. Now that the SSL certificate is installed, remember you can always select the option Apply to MC and follow the same procedure to apply it to the management console so that way your uh, lock icon up here shows in green or without any warnings. That concludes this tutorial video. Thank you very much for watching.